everybody! So I have for you five clarinet hacks to use while practicing. And I thought of these clarinet hacks as I was practicing, and I wrote them down, so if you see me looking at my notes, that's why. Alright, so it's best just to get right into this video. So the first clarinet hack is how to improve your scales. So basically, when you're learning your scales, everybody starts from the bottom of the scale, you play the top of the scale, and then you come back down. That totally makes sense. Um, as a challenge to yourself, start at the top of the scale or arpeggio, play down to the bottom, and then go back up to the top. That's a lot easier said than done with certain scales, so give it a try. Better yet, start the scale on a random pitch found within the scale. So if you're starting on a C major scale, start on an E and practice up to the C. Just like that, just start on a random pitch within the scale. Better yet, when you get to the top note, play a couple notes past that, and when you get to the ending note, play a couple notes past that. So it's easier to just play it and give you an example than it is to uh, explain with words. So C major scale, one more time. <laughs> you're practicing an entire key signature instead of just a scale. So that'll give your brain and your muscle memory a bit of a workout. With the chromatic scale, uh, you should be able to start from any random pitch on the clarinet and play a chromatic scale going up, even just a couple of pitches, or going down. In either direction, you should be proficient completely. So what I mean by is if you start on, say, an A natural, being able to play up, and being able to play down on, say, chromatic F-sharp fingering. You want to be able to be really proficient, proficient in um, the chromatic scale as well, because that shows up all over the place in all repertoire. Um, and you can actually get better at it if you just practice it, um, just quizzing yourself um, on, from, uh, on any random pitch on the clarinet, just like one minute. It takes one minute and you're practicing. 60 seconds, pick a random note, play a chromatic scale. Pick a random note, play a chromatic scale. So that will help you get better at the chromatic scale. Um, another thing that I thought of, the second hack, is to relax. So when music gets difficult, we tend to sort of clench our fingers without realizing it, and we get tension in our neck and shoulders, and sometimes even embouchure. So when you're playing something really fast, Focus on your hands for a second and see if they're becoming really clenched or if you're pressing down on the clarinet really hard. Because you don't want to do that. That causes tendonitis. You don't want to you don't want tendonitis. So if you really focus on relaxing your fingers and only using the amount of pressure that you need to actually close the hole that you're trying to cover, um, you'll find that there's actually a lot more fluidity and speed in your fingers when you focus on just relaxing them, even if the music is really fast. Um, so one way that you can sort of combat that is, you know, say you're practicing and it's getting really fast and you're, like, you're realizing that you're really pressing down on the clarinet, you don't need to. So shake out your hands, shake out your arms, and then place them without like doing anything, they're all relaxed, place them on the clarinet, and then play the really difficult stuff that you're trying to play. It's also helpful when you're shaking out your hands to shrug a little bit, to just like get the tension out of your neck and shoulders and just sort of like reset and then play the fast passage that you're trying to learn. Speaking of fast, difficult music. So the last video that I did, I focused a lot on how to practice really fast music. Something that I accidentally left out was to play a passage um, backwards. So if you're, I talked a lot in my last video about alternating rhythms. Um, so if you have tried alternating the rhythms in a really fast 16th note passage and you're not getting results, try practicing the passage backwards. So an example would be, say you have a really hard arpeggio from a really high E flat all the way down to a low F over the entire range of the scale and there are accidentals everywhere. So if you've tried practicing it 
you know, from top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, you keep, you know, not being able to get it and you're getting frustrated, try starting at that low F, try starting at the bottom and playing it backwards all the way up to the E flat. And that can be um, applied to any passage of music. Start at the end and play backwards to the beginning. I hope that makes sense. Um, because sometimes that's really hard to do because you're reading music backwards. So sometimes doing something that's more difficult than what you're trying to do makes what you're trying to do seem easier. Because when you go back to play it the right direction, you know, you're reading music the normal way, you've already practiced it a few times. So try playing really fast passages backwards. So that's the third clarinet hack. The fourth clarinet hack has to do with the throat tone area and something called resonance fingerings. So if you don't know what resonance fingerings are, I'm about to explain it to you. So when you're playing a note like an open G or an A flat or an A or a B flat, you might notice that those notes sound really thin and they also might be really sharp. And the reason for that is you have no fingers down. So when you're playing, say, an open G, there is air coming out of the entire length of your instruments, coming out of all of these holes, the air is just escaping, and your clarinet is essentially only about this long, <laughs> which is why you need a lot of air when you're playing a low E, because your clarinet all of a sudden becomes this long. So, um, so when you put fingers down, it actually directs the air through the instrument, um, sort of a more focused um, airflow. It focuses the airflow through the clarinet, making the notes sound more resonant, hence the term resonance fingerings. So, it also brings down the intonation also, because those notes tend to be really, really sharp. So by adding a couple uh, fingers down here, it actually um, brings the pitch down a little bit too. And I'll give you some examples. Um, you might want to pause the video here and grab a pen and a piece of paper if you don't have one nearby, because I'm going to give you the fingering so that you can use them in your practice. So for open G, I put down, let me move back a little bit so that we get the clarinet in. Open G, in my right hand, I put down fingers one and three. That's all you need to do. Open G, one and three. So I will uh, show you how different it sounds. So open, it's going to sound thin and maybe sharp. And then I'm going to put down the fingers. You can hear it, um, you know, the thin sound alternating with a fuller sound. So that's, uh, you know, open G, one and three. That's the resonance fingering for that. For the G sharp or A flat, this guy right here, I put down my left, in my left hand, third finger, right hand, uh, one and three. And then I press down the C key, which closes this little guy here to direct the air even further down the instrument. So this is how that sounds. With A, I put down left hand two and three, right hand two and three, and the C key. And the more fingers you put down and the more holes you close, you can hear the resonance happening within the note. And for B flat, I actually use the same thing. So left hand two and three, right hand two and three, and the C key. So by adding those fingerings, um, it actually brings your, it engages all of the fingers of both of your hands. So it improves your hand position by keeping your fingers a lot closer to the clarinet, which makes going from the B flat to the B natural really a lot easier because if you're playing the B flat with two, three, two, three, and the C key, um, you're like 80% of the way to like a B over the break. So it makes that switch super easy. Um, and I know that the resonance fingerings are a little strange at first, but high notes, like anything above a high C, D, E, F, those notes are really weird too, so it's just a matter of practicing them enough so that they become second nature. So try to incorporate those as much as you can into your practicing, and you'll find that your intonation is improved, 
and you'll find that just the overall tone quality of the throat tone register improves a lot just with practicing. Um, the last hack that I'm going to talk about is breathing. So you're not going to be able to play long passages of music by taking a really, really shallow breath, like the kind that you take that where your like shoulders move, like, like that was such a wimpy breath. So you want to fill your entire lung capacity. So the easiest way to remedy this is to take your finger, put it in a, a spot on your lower back, like not your butt, but like kind of where your tail, tailbone is, um, and like visualize the air coming in through your mouth into your lungs and try to pretend like you're breathing out of that spot in your back, if that makes sense. So I'm visualizing the air going to my lower back. And you want to sit up when you're doing this. Um, and you can tell already that I got so much more air with that breath, thinking about it that way, than I did with a little, you know, wimpy breath. Um, another thing that I find is really helpful is to exhale everything I already have in my lungs and then inhale so that it fills everything. And the easiest way to do this is to exhale audibly for four counts and then inhale audibly for four counts. And it might feel a little weird to do it, but do it with me. So we're gonna exhale for four and inhale for four. It kind of feels like we're doing yoga. So let's exhale, ready? Also, don't do this too much because you'll get super lightheaded, but that's a really good breathing exercise to work on. And the last thing uh, with breathing is that if you need a really quick um, breath, if you don't have a lot of time to exhale everything and then breathe in, try putting your hand in front of your mouth and breathing in this way. I don't know why this works, but it creates resistance and it feels kind of good to just like suck in as much air as you can with a little bit of resistance in the way. So you put your hand like this and just go and you suck in as much air as you can. And doing that a couple times, you'll start to feel what it feels like to breathe with your entire, you know, use of your diaphragm instead of just like, you know, a little teeny breath where you're just filling up and expanding your entire rib cage. So those are five clarinet hacks that I thought literally as I was practicing. I'm going to make these videos periodically as I think of more tips that I think will be useful to know. Um, as always, if you have your own clarinet hacks or anything you want to share or any questions about anything that I talked about, please leave them in the comments. And also, as always, I'm going to go practice now and you should too.